Hey everybody, we're back. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our traced image, uh, same file, nothing's been changed. Make sure that we have our proper reference up. Uh, we're going to make a new layer, and from there we're going to start working with the painting. Now I, I've got a custom brush that I'm using. Uh, you can use anything. It doesn't have to be a, a big fancy custom brush or anything like that. Uh, for the most part I would say that's a semi soft edge so I'm going to start with the background and I want to start blocking in all the lights and all the darks in the background so once I get the uh, background done and as well as the middle and foreground I'll start moving towards the figures and the objects on the table but it's important that I establish uh, the tones and values of the background, middle ground, and foreground because all the objects set in that environment. So if my environment's off, then the objects that are in that environment, they're going to be off. And what I mean by off is they don't look natural, they compete with one another, and, it, and the image starts to become very flat. Uh, one way to do to avoid that is constantly zoom in and zoom out uh, make sure that you hide the line work you know our line work is on a separate layer so turn that on and off turn it off and squint your eyes does everything blend together does it look like one big gray mass well if it does well that means your values aren't working they're all just blending together so you want to be able to squint and be able to still distinguish uh, the broad shapes of all the objects that you want to be uh, of importance. So what happened there was I had made the new layer and forgot to select it when I was painting. So I just said, ah, you know, the hell with it, I'll just continue to paint on the layer I started with. It, it doesn't matter. Uh, the reason I wanted it on a separate layer, or sorry, a separate layer, was that I could show you guys uh, after the video the difference between uh, a, the background, foreground, middle ground, as well as the objects that live in that. It's okay. I think I think you guys understand what's happening here. You know, the second darkest object is the t-shirt. So I'm, I'm laying that in, and it almost blends in with the middle ground. Or I'm sorry, with the background there. It's just a little bit lighter, not by much. And I think really what sets that difference off are the, uh, the contrast in the wrinkles of the shirt and the shadow around the neck. Otherwise, it would just blend in. normally do is I work with, uh, especially if it's a figure, uh, I'll work with the face first. Uh, that's for me anyway, that's a that's an area of primary focus. So I will establish all of the correct values in the uh, face. And once I do that, I will then sample uh, values and information from the face for everything else. doesn't always work especially let's say for example if your face is in really stark shadow and everything else isn't obviously that's not going to work uh, but in this case uh, the face is a big enough object that it has a very wide range of values so it's a great one or a great place to start um, and develop a little early on and especially in this case develop it early on and then sample from that. And what I mean by sample is I just use the eyedropper tool 
to pull up information such as highlights, darks, middle values, things like that, and apply that in other areas of the, of the uh, painting. As a general rule of thumb, most highlights are going to have a hard edge. Now, keyword most, not all, most. Um, because the skin is soft, because the skin has um, uh, what's called subsurface scattering, it's going to absorb that light and spread it out inside the skin. So it will not have a very hard edge. Now, there, that doesn't mean it there aren't areas that will, especially areas that are close to the bone, such as the cheeks, uh, ears, you know, the cartilage of the ears. Those will almost have uh, hard edge highlights. And you'll be able to see those once you look closely and once you start to understand what you're looking for. Uh, but I primarily work with one hard edge brush and one soft edge brush. It's also important to point out that uh, in your color mixer, or your, I'm sorry, in the uh, color picker, you have the option to choose either RGB or HSV. Um, because of the plugin that I have, I have both. Uh, but I primarily, especially if I'm just working in grayscale like I am here, I'll only work with the one slider, and that's the value slider. So what I can do is I can pick any kind of value from what I've already put down and then I'll go over to the slider and I'll adjust it. I'll move it forward to make it lighter or I'll move it backwards to make it darker. You know, if you, and if you don't know where, what the HSV sliders are, definitely look that up. That's a, that's a huge help. Okay, it's important that I point out that at this stage, I'm thinking about the different materials. Uh, so if I think of the skin as a material, and then I think of, we'll say, the, uh, the sake, what would that be, sake pitcher, uh, the sake cup, and a glass bottle, plus the shirt. So I've got all these different uh, materials that are happening here. So what I'm looking for are what are the commonalities between all of them. And that's going to typically be, uh, in this case, the highlights. So I'm going to start establishing highlights now. And that's going to really pull forward uh, certain objects. You can see here on the hand once I start adding in these highlights and shadows that it's going to start to take better shape or better form. Now I don't want to have the same type of darks and same types of highlights as I would say for uh, the little sake cup there because it's it's not skin it's 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 a much harder surface much gloss it has a lot more gloss to it and those little highlights that are on a glossy object or really anywhere that's just what we call specularity and everything has specularity it could be really really subtle uh, or it could be really stark like we'll see here in just a moment And here we are. We're going to, I think at this point, yeah, I just want to start adding in some highlights around that little uh, uh, rim. And get that shadow there. Again, I'm not trying to be exact with my brush strokes, I'm just laying in. Masses of tone. 
You know, I'm letting the viewer's eye blend these things together. I'm not going to sit there and try to manually blend everything. Could. If that's, you know, if that if you want that to be your style of working, you absolutely could. It's just going to take a much longer time. And, you know, it's important that you zoom out, that you flip the image uh, back and forth. And each time you do, hide the line work and squint. Make sure you squint. You want to make sure that you are purposely forcing the shapes to blend together in your vision. And that's why you squint. To blend those shapes together. Uh, when I'm, I'm working on the spout here. Uh, it's one of my more favorite parts of this image. I never really noticed until I started doing this that there's a little tiny drop of sake on the end, uh, edge of that spout there. That's a nice little uh, visual tool to help push the viewer's eye in that direction towards the hand. What we're watching now is sped up, like I said, uh, roughly uh, double speed. So I normally don't work this fast. It would be awesome if I did. Hell, I can't think that fast. I'm not using uh, pure black. I'm using just enough black to uh, push or pull uh, surfaces uh, away or towards me. And that's kind of how I think about it. You know, if I want to push something back, then I'll apply a darker tone. If I want to pull it forward, I'll apply a lighter tone. And you know, there's a lot of cases where I will leave certain mistakes, um, just because uh, you know. And, and it's up to you. It's really your personal opinion. You know, in many cases, some mistakes look good, so I just leave them there, even though it may deform certain areas. It still, it just looks good overall. And you'll notice too that uh, I don't do a lot of erasing. Instead, what I'll do is I'll sample a local color and use that to cover up the mistake. Or let's say, for instance, uh, that really dark spot on the hand, the back of the hand there, next to the uh, little sake dish thing. Uh, at some point, I'll go back in and I'll just brush over that with a very, very light touch and a soft brush to push that value further back so it's not as stark. So in other words, I'm adding light to it. I would rather do that than just straight up trying to erase it. But again, that's my working method. You don't have to adhere to that. Maybe you like to erase. Maybe at this point you've got 50 layers. That's fine. You can have as many layers as your computer can handle. So when it comes to working with uh, reflective objects like this bottle, uh, the trace is really, really helpful. It's going to give me all those little subtle reminders to say, you know, hey, this is where the water touches the glass. Uh, in this case, this is where light comes through the bottle and, and reflects and refracts off of the liquid inside it.
you know, watch, um, as I'm watching this, I'm reminded that um, you may get people that tell you uh, don't use small little hash marks, don't make little fuzzy lines. Um, man, you know, it's really up to you. It really is. In the end, you're the one who has to do the work. So if that's what you're comfortable with using, So again, you know, constantly pulling back and looking at the image as a whole. Hide those lines. Look for things that blend together. You know, that bottle comes very close, especially where the labels are. Uh, the bottle becomes very close to blending into the table. That's why you got to hide those lines. Those lines act as a container. And that's one of the very few areas there at the top of that bottle that are 100% white. You know, I, I use that very sparingly because, you know, as I said, once you do 100% of anything in an image, you can never go beyond that. You know, also keep in mind that I, I'm using pressure sensitivity so even though uh, I've got my selection my color selection set to 100% white uh, that doesn't mean when I put the brush stroke down it's going to be 100% because I do have uh, opacity controlled by how hard I press, press on the brush you know now would be a good time for me to hide those lines and uh, get a better idea of the values of the face here. And the shadows for that upper lid. There we go. So I got a, you know, those wings that are cast shadows or, or uh, reflect refractions from of light from our glasses. Uh, I need to smooth those out a little bit because they're it's starting to look like the my face is caved in. There we go. Now I'm, I'm trying to fix that lip so it doesn't look like I'm uh, above a Gump employee. And there we go. That's where I lightened up that dark. And it was too dark. And one thing to keep in mind, um, if you hide your lines and then once you unhide them, the image looks better with the lines on it, that's a pretty good warning that you don't have enough contrast in your image. That everything's kind of floating around uh, the middle area, middle value range. So you need to go back in and start adding some more contrast, darks and lights. That doesn't mean go in and start adding pure blacks or pure whites. It just means uh, you need to rethink where your values are, the value ranges. And yeah, that poor hand. It looks like it's been crushed. Um, you know, I, I'm not sure if I've said already, but I, I do fix that. Um, I just didn't record it. I saw it after the recording. So we're adding in some core shadows there. For the fingers to help those be a little more round.
So the reason I added the uh, cat to the t-shirt, uh, I needed something in there to break up that big void of the shirt. And uh, it just helps to bring the viewer's eye out of that area and back into the scene. So it's much better, in my opinion, to have that than just a straight up void of a t-shirt. So I believe we're pretty much finished now. And uh, I'd like to thank you guys for watching. And make sure you share this with other people. It's free.